So this slide here is an estimated per patient cost, sort of an average. And for those of you that are familiar with budgets, you know, I was kind of looking at this, trying to figure out, well, where did they get their numbers? And if you've worked in many different therapeutic areas, you'll realize that the numbers really vary depending on the therapeutic area. It varies depending on the phase. It varies, um, and I'm talking about per patient, you know, cost, because obviously when you're looking at volume, it increases. So, you know, it can vary also in terms of the, the location of where sites um, are located. In phase one, you'll see the difference. In 2004, it was $5,500 per um, patient. And then in 2011, it's 20, almost $22,000. And I know that I've worked on some phase one studies that are, you know, pretty amazing in terms of, you know, in terms of what it costs to get a phase one, to get that phase one study completed. For phase two, in 2004, 6500 went in 2008 to 21,000, and then 2011, a little over 36,000. In phase 3A and 3B, in 2004, they really weren't distinguishing A and B as much, phase 3A and 3B as much. It was $7,600 in 2004. Increase, you can see, pretty large increase, $25,280, and then Again, almost doubled in 2011 to 47,523. Phase four, there were no statistics listed for phase four trials in 2004. Went to 13,000, 2008. You know, was the uh, figure that was uh, provided. And then in 2011, it's now 17,042 um, was the figure that was provided. So not much difference in terms of the phase four trials there. But, you know, if you think about what's involved in phase four, it's probably understandable. And then you saw that there was that reference, if you'd like to look it up, um, you know, right beneath the slide there. So we can't have a um, presentation or a uh, session that's offering to use without learning objectives. So here are the learning objectives for this session. We want to prepare for negotiations and define the steps in the negotiating process. Integrate strategies for effective negotiating. Review success factors and risks in negotiations and discuss ethical considerations. A second um, objective is to review industry study startup basic contract um, content. Talk a little bit about state institutional sort of laws or policies versus sponsor required language. And then boilerplate terms. And this probably may not be as big an issue if you're working just in the U.S., but certainly becomes an issue when you are doing a global clinical trial. Indemnification and then other agreements, including data use, confidentiality, um, HIPAA and master agreements. So now we'll get to the meat of it, which is developing study budgets based on objective market data, subject versus visit base. So we'll give you um, sort of examples about how people come to terms in terms of the budgets. The one thing I want to be sure that, you know, you're clear about is that we're not going to give figures at all, dollar amounts and such. We'll give sort of these fantasy numbers. But because I said earlier that many times it's dependent on the therapeutic area, and also the type of study, and also your sponsor and what kind of, uh, you know, capital is behind this. You know, budgets in terms of the actual dollar signs per procedure, you know, informed consent process, et cetera, will vary. So we're, you know, going to uh, not provide those numbers. We'll give you ideas as to how to assess protocol feasibility and resource needs and, you know, really take a look at some of the hidden costs that uh, you've probably come across. And certainly um, we would encourage you to share. And then study startup to a final query resolution. From study startup to final query resolution. And then to go from study protocol, so you've done feasibility, looking at your study protocol, and then getting unsuccessful study budgets and planning for protocol amendments, procedure changes, financial checks, and then balances. There are a number of handouts that you should have received, and number one is the fair market value handout. Number two is the cost per patient budget example. Number three is study budget per visit. Number four is a breakdown of subject and professional fees. Number five is per visit budget with miscellaneous items such as early term patients prorated and screen failures. There is no number six handout. 
number seven handout is a tip sheet, 25 provisions by AAHRP, um, and that is actually a great article that gives you sort of some language that you can perhaps take a look at and incorporate into your own contracts. Number eight is budget development worksheet, and ten is a manpower estimation worksheet. Thank you.